Now, I will make this into Ghost 5. What is up, everybody? Oh. Got my coffee, my donkeys. Although it's this is midday coffee. Happy Monday to everybody. I like this kind of starting the videos off on Mondays. We vlog throughout the week. You guys get to see everything. I like this. It tells a story. Midday right now. Glacier says hello. What up, girl? What up? A lot going on over here. This is like my, my area of stuff that I need to put into the tiny house. Washer dryer unit. The combo that has been bought for a while. Uh, I actually have a new Brava that I can't show yet. There's a Brava that's in the house, but I can't show the new one, but I'm really excited to share the new one with you guys. Uh, the Anchor Power System, which I gotta do. All right, I'm gonna be unboxing the new Anchor Powerhouse that I have received. You know, I picked it up on my doorstep, I brought it to my shop, and this is what it, how it comes. I bring this up because I think it's important to know how things are packaged their packaging job is really well done and it's important because you have a very expensive item in here it like literally tells you how to unbox this you're going to cut it open and then you're going to flip it upside down and you're going to lift up it's that easy watch i'll probably still screw it up I don't know if that was the best way, but it was a way. Right at the top, you have your case, you know, wires and stuff in there. And we're gonna go over that in a little bit. Has your owner manual, boom. Obviously has a lot of, a lot of foam. Uh, normally this would be on the ground, but I'm gonna slide this off the table and I'm gonna let the box just fall. Voila! And this thing is so pretty. <laughs> kind of show you what I did over the weekend because I didn't vlog anything. I keep my batteries off when I'm not here, everybody, uh, just for safety, even though everything's pretty safe. Now that I'm standing here, that's my backsplash. The Corian is gonna be the backsplash on this side where the, where the bar is. Over the weekend, I... Did this piece right here that I talked about in my last video, which was a pain in the patoot on cutting wise, but I think it looks really good. What I was trying to explain in that video is these panels, these wall panels made by a company called Wall Theory, they're fake concrete and I'm using fake brick inside of the bed, but up there as well on my end walls are gonna be a fake brick and then fake concrete on the, the long sidewall. They're two by four panels and they're made to look like concrete panels. They are extremely lightweight and they're obviously DIY friendly. I thought it was a great idea for me to put it into the tiny house because I wanted this concrete look. I was going to do it myself. I was actually gonna do a lot more brick than I decided to, but I really fell in love with these like panel looks. When you put concrete panels inside of an industrial space, you want kind of like that look to it like the uh like the horizontal and the vertical seams to all line up hopefully today tomorrow next couple of days i can get this entire panel done with the backsplash going that's really my goal and then obviously to start working on these panels down here so i got that one done and then i got this one done down here and i got all up here done which was i screwed up like twice use these stands in place because how you attach these panels is actually with uh, like an adhesive and then you can screw right into the side where the lips are. I installed my work desk where my office is gonna be, my computer's gonna be up on that top desk up there. I wanna do like a river table up there out of probably walnut to kind of do an opposite contrast of what the maple is. And you know, it's fine. This is the flooring that I got going on with it. This is my desk. It's bolted in 
And it's funny because it's bolted in. I only have one bolt per flange. And this stuff sucker ain't going anywhere. I'm shaking the whole house. So I'll put a chair right there, my desk right here, my computer right there, and that'll overlook the entire tiny house with obviously these windows are doubly used. The way that I designed everything is those are north facing windows. There'll be no direct sunlight that'll be coming through there because they're facing the north side. When you're sitting up there, I'll be able to look out these windows out into nature, but I'll also be able to look into my tiny house. I think it's a really cool idea. I got this idea many years ago from a site that I saw, a picture I saw. If I can find the picture, I will throw it up where I got the inspiration from. Uh, let's get to work and I kind of will maybe catch you guys up either tomorrow, Tuesday, or I'll catch you guys up later tonight. But I'm going to give you guys all some updates on the tiny house. And really, I just decided this week I'm gonna focus on the walls. I wanna get the walls done. So that is actually what I've been doing the last few days. However, I did a little thing. Hopefully it will excite all of you because it excited me. As I talked about in my last vlog last week, I am nearing completion of this tiny house. I've got about six to eight weeks left if I truly dedicate myself to like just focusing and getting it done. But this past year, I have been thinking about doing an overlanding rig. I had a Jeep Gladiator and I absolutely loved it. I had a rooftop tent. Now I'm not gonna do a rooftop tent again because frankly, I didn't really like it. I was looking at maybe like a Jeep Wrangler or a Toyota 4Runner or one of the new Ford Broncos. Those are perfect for just overlanding everyday vehicles. And some of you that have been loyal followers of mine, thank you very much, know that I actually had a Rivian last year. And the Rivian to me was the, one of the best trucks that I've ever had car wise, truck wise, everything. I even ordered the camp kitchen that was on back order, but I was waiting for that. I had to make a really hard and fast decision that either I keep the Rivian that I was paying $950 a month on because I also had an F-250 pickup and I couldn't trade that in because I bought it at the height of the market and I was upside down on my loan. Get rid of the Rivian. I broke even on it. I didn't make any money on it. And then buy the land that I'm actually paying less on per month than I am the actual Rivian. And I really feel that having the land was a better decision for me. But this goes back to, I still want a camping rig. I still need to go to these events or I still want to go to these events. I still want to travel around with little Glacier that's sleeping on the couch right now. I still want to travel around for my own well-being and all that good stuff. So what do I do? I love my F-250 pickup because it is a phenomenal work truck. It is amazing in inclement weather. And I was like, why don't I just do what I did, which is get a cap for it. Really wasn't that hard. <laughs> now I will make this into Ghost 5. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with what I call GHOST, GHOST is an acronym that stands for Ground Home Operation Stealth Transportation. That was my first van, the name of it. I kept that name. I've made a logo out of it. I made a brand out of it. Uh, GHOST has always been part of me. I now am going to be starting GHOST Design and Build. This is still a ways out. I still have to get some things done, but I will probably keep this build because I've done an overlanding rig before and I learned my lessons. Do this at a later date. Wheels have already started to turn on what I want to do. More than likely, I will get a pre-made drawer system. I can't say that word, I know. And I'll be able to use this as a work and a camper rig. Work and camper rig, it's really important to me. I might want to, I, I might want to do work on the road, so I want to bring some tools with me. I may want to also bring like cooking apparatuses. So I'm gonna have to have a cooler of some sort or a refrigerator of some sort. I'll probably wanna make this all pretty in here because that's what I do. One of the very first things that I focus on and that I try to think about is how am I going to power everything? Power to me is one of, if not the most important thing when it comes to having either a camping rig or even a van for that matter. So what am I gonna use this time? Am I gonna build my own system, which is kind of a pain in the patoot, or am I going to just have an all-in-one system? Well, enter Anchor. Hey, 
and there it is. Okay, now that it is all unboxed, I wanna talk a lot about it. I wanna show you guys some great features and why I am choosing this for my camping rig, as well as backup power. So now this is the Anchor Solix 767. If I did not say Solix correctly, I'm going to write it down on the bottom of the screen so you guys can all see it. So right as I was rolling it over to the table that I want to kind of show and demonstrate it all, you saw immediately that they have these wheels that are rugged. They can handle a lot of weight. They are, you know, can roll over practically anything. I, I mean, I'm on a concrete floor, but I will definitely be testing it out on other types of pavement. Uh, obviously, it's not gonna roll through sand, everybody, but you get my point. However, that being said, you did see me lift it from the ground up to the table, which means this is a large amount of power in a little amount of space. Handle to this is a push button right here on my left, your right, and it comes out here. Why do I like it conveniently placed at the top instead of maybe at the bottom? Well. That goes back to just design and how it functions properly. Going at the bottom is going to be a little more strenuous on your back or your legs or, or your arms or whatever, however you lift. Coming this way is just more conveniently placed where you can tip it and get it onto the wheels a lot easier. Uh, other things that come is obviously the wall outlet, obviously very essential. It can charge this massive power station from zero to 80% in under an hour or close to an hour, I should say. Power on this station is 2,048 watt hours. Now, a lot of people in the van space, they actually convert everything to amp hours, which is fine. But if you want to convert it to amp hours, you just take that number and you divide it by 12 and that gives you the amp hours in it, which is about 177, I think, point something amp hours. Now that's at 12 volt. So that is if you're using any of the DC ports. So like your USB chargers, the USB A, type A and type C, are they, am I pointing to the right side? Yeah, they're over here, see that? Or the, the cigarette lighter port or the 12 volt port, which is right there as well. I actually have a shower, like a, like a heated shower that uses that, um, that type of port where it's like a sponge bath sort of thing and it plugs right into that. So technically I could shower with this because it, this could easily power that heating element for a hot sponge bath shower thing. It's a camping type shower. The other ports on here, you have your standard 120 volt outlets. So anything you're gonna plug into that 120 volt, whether it's like a cooking apparatus, if you wanna like have a hot plate, or if I wanna have like a kettle, or in my case, what I love to do on the road is carry a bunch of tools with me. So I will be taking my like my battery charger and I'll be able to charge up my batteries uh, for all of my cordless tools. So if I wanted to bring a chop saw, I'll be able to plug the chop saw right into this. I'll be able to plug a table saw right into this, which brings me to the last port, which is a 30 amp RV port. What? <laughs> that is a big, big power outlet. The reason I bring up that outlet is what I was talking about before. This not only can be backup power for like my tiny house or somebody that has an on-grid house that is just, you know, regular home, I guess, or an apartment, but it can also be a backup power for your van or your RV. You could actually plug right into that 30 amp plug and you could back up all the power that you need until maybe the next morning when you get some sun uh, and this will be able to get you to the next day or again use it as backup power. Now obviously it comes with other chargers you can charge directly from uh, you know your car while you're driving that's a 12 volt port that will actually plug right into the back of this and then what I also love is obviously solar. You can put up to I guess five solar panels I believe it has a max input solar-wise of a thousand watts of solar. That is a lot, a lot of solar. <laughs> I'm impressed, what can I say? All right, let's have some fun and let's, uh, let's power some things that, would, that I would use. Like, I'm a big guy, so I'm going to actually grab one of my favorite cooking apparatuses, which is the Brava oven. Okay, I went and took the Brava directly out of my tiny house that was sitting in there so I could actually use it in my tiny house. If this can power this, this is probably the highest power drawer that I have in my tiny house. So definitely, 
definitely, definitely can use it as backup power. Now the Brava is an infrared electric oven, practically. We're going to peel this off because it's just super satisfying to do that. Uh, hit this button for the AC outlets. Brava just turned on. You might be able to see the lights on there, probably not. We're gonna give it a second for the Brava to boot up, but I also will say, um, what is really nice about the Anchor Solix 767 is there's a port on the back side of this that actually can get two or add another battery to this. So you can actually double the capacity by just adding or daisy chaining another battery source to this. Now there's the pizza and we're gonna hit the display button there and boom, we're at 86%, which it says I got two days remaining of just sitting here doing nothing. Got the AC on, boom, boom. We are going to search and we're gonna type in pizza cause you know, that's what I'm making. And we are going to find the frozen mini bagels. We got two zones cooking, one and two, okay. And this is a preset cause I like them a little bit overcooked. So we're actually, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, the tray is gonna go on top. So we're gonna now take that and we are gonna put the tray into the top section of this. There, that is now loaded up. Close that up, hit the last one, and we are going to hit the green button for go. As you can see, it jumped up to 1300 watts. So we're gonna let this cook for, it's gonna say eight minutes right there. I don't know if you can see with the glare, boom, there's eight minutes. We're gonna let it do its thing while, uh, you know, I'm because I'm getting hungry. I'm getting hungry just talking to you guys. I just realized I have a glare like right there in the screen. I'm sorry about that. But so another great feature that just the last couple minutes while the pizza is cooking. But one of my favorite features about the Anchor Solix 767 is it is Bluetooth capable, which is what I actually just set it up as my pizza was cooking. Download the app, which is very simple. There's a QR code actually in the owner's manual. Mm control everything. It looks like I can control power, AC, uh, DC outlets. I can, it looks like I'm drawing. I mean, you can see right here, 900 watts. It's going jumping up and down, up and down, which is what it always does. Just at your finger. Wow, look at that. It even gives you the temperature right there underneath the percentage of the battery. And there is the pizza that is done. So let's take a look at it. Leave it to me to not have any like, you know, mittens or mittens. And as you guys can see that we've got some nice, I like my pizza a little bit crispy. So uh, it's some nice bagel pizza, mini pizzas, a little bit more with the Anchor Solix 767 before we wrap things up. All right, now that I've eaten my bagel pizzas, I do want to talk to you guys about uh, Anchor Soulflex's fan day that's gonna be starting on June 25th and they're gonna be doing a lot of discounts. So make sure that you go check out the links below that I provide for you in the description. You're gonna be able to access some major discounts that Anchor Solix is offering on June 25th. Ultimately, we just wanna live in power. I wanna live in power because I wanna make sure that my power needs are sufficient enough inside my tiny house, as well as all my camping trips in my you new but used uh, truck camper that I'll be building out. Now to wrap up the Anchor Solix 767, a lot of people usually ask about these portable power stations on how much it can really power. So my good friends over at Udu Vans, I think I'm saying that right, Udu, U-D-O, Dave and Kyle, Dave is the owner of Udu, he just put one of these to power an entire van. So obviously it is very capable of doing that, Anchor was also the sponsor of a show that I was on, which was Gutted. I was a judge on season two of Gutted, where three teams competed to build the best rig in five days, seven people per team. And I was one of the judges because I was actually on season one of Gutted. Anchor was one of the proud sponsors of that. So definitely want to check out all five episodes of Gutted season two, and you get to see your boy, judge the competition and see who win. One of the coolest things that I actually saw during that show was this exact power station, the 767, weld. Chuck Cassidy was able to weld using one of these, so he had a portable welder practically, which is just insane to me when you think about that. My point of saying all that is, 
it's not just coming from me about how great this power system is and the company Anchor as well. My friends use them to power entire vans and I have other friends that use it on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's inside of a shop or on their daily life traveling around the country. All of the links will be below. Make sure you check that description. I need to go back to the tiny house so I can finish off those wall panels and I can show you guys that at the end of this video. Let's get back to work. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed me showing off what my future plans are with an overlanding rig or a camping rig. I'm excited about it. Hopefully you guys will follow along. Watch how I do probably one of the simplest builds that I've ever done coming up after I'm done with this behemoth behind me. Behemoth, it's a tiny house for crying out loud. So after I filmed all that stuff and, and, and worked, I got a little bit more work done. And last couple of days I've been working on the wall panels in the house, which I'm about to show you. But I wanted to show you guys why it's been taking so long. And actually next vlog, I'll be hopefully showing all four walls done, including the brick and the concrete. That portion of the video showing the brick and the concrete is gonna be a quick one because most of the vlog is actually going to be me traveling to Tiny Fest or Colorado Tiny House Fest, which has tiny houses, um, vans, school buses, you know, ambulances, all, anything converted into a mobile living space will be at that show. And I love going to that show. This is, I think, my third or fourth year going, I think fourth year. And I'm actually speaking at this event, so I'll bring you guys along for that ride. I wanted to show kind of real quick on why it takes as long as it does for some of this stuff. This is a one piece that goes up over the window, which I'll walk in and show you guys where it goes. But I broke it last night. Right there, I was dry fitting it into place, and this stuff is brittle. It's pretty much foam board that is painted and, and texturized to make it look like concrete. You guys can see there, right? Um, yeah, after I was dry fitting, it got stuck. I was trying to yank it out and I yanked a little too hard and boom, it broke. That one piece, this one piece was upwards of 25, 30 minutes of me working on it. Now, why would it take that long? Because I do all the cutting down here. That's why it's all dusty and gross and nasty and messy. And, and then I have to come in here and I have to go up this ladder into the, onto the countertop, up this ladder. And that's where that piece was or was supposed to go. Uh, I recut it this morning and it's now up in place. I did a whole nother, a, a new piece. Um, but as you guys might be able to tell, I am pretty much done with the concrete. I've got, you know, this entire wall done over here. Uh, I've got behind the Murphy bed, there is brick. That's done. And then all of this concrete is done. I got one more piece up there and then another piece on the far back corner back there. Brick is going in there. I've got baseboard going down on the bottom there. I got a little piece right there. I've got a little piece down here. I've got a piece up in that top corner and then I've got some pieces down there. Concrete will be done hopefully by the end of today. If I can move fast enough and efficient enough, I should say, then I'm going to be start working on the brick walls. I hope to show that to you guys real quick before I head to Colorado. Hopefully let's have some fingers crossed, but I want to make sure I get this vlog out. I'll see you guys next time. Later. I